Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless a shocking new survey from brown university student newspaper finds that nearly 40 percent of the school's student body do not identify as straight and the percentage of students that identify as lgbtq plus has nearly tripled in just 13 years it's now five times the national rate for americans the school paper the brown daily herald has been asking students the same survey question since 2010. And the number of students who don't see themselves as straight has risen sharply in recent years. We'll take a look. You can see the yellow color represents students who identify as heterosexual. That number has been shrinking and has done so significantly. The other colors represent the various groups of students who don't consider themselves straight. That number is now at 38%. Right now, um, especially in social media, in our media social climate for youth, that being ident that identifying as anything other than cisgender or heterosexual is rewarded in many ways. And kids are so impressionable. Obviously, they do whatever their friends are doing. They identify as whatever their friends are identifying as. So I think. Uh, notwithstanding the point that there are higher concentrations in certain areas, I think right now we are seeing a massive spike in this because it's cool, because it's popular, because it's rewarded, because there are rainbow flags everywhere, and children are being distracted from a true education and exploring their true identities and simply making sure that they're not cast out for being too normal, which is unacceptable in today's America. We now live in an Isaiah 520 world where evil is good and good is evil, where the sin of being a homo sexual or transgender is openly celebrated and even glorified. One of the many signs that we are living in the end times is the epidemic of homosexuality that is sweeping the world today. Jesus said he would return at a time when society parallels the days of Lot as we read in Luke 17 28 through 30. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. To find out what parallels our days with the days of Lot, we need to go back to the book of Genesis. Genesis 19, 1-5 Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground, and said, My lords, please turn aside to your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise up early and go on your way. They said, No. We will spend the night in the town square. But he pressed them strongly, so they turned aside to him and entered his house. And he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. But before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, surrounded the house. And they called to Lot, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us, that we may know them. The term know them isn't a friendly handshake and how are you. It is to know them in a sexual way. What parallels our days with the days of Lot is homosexuality. Just as in the days of Lot, not only is homosexuality widely accepted today, but it's being taught to our kids, just like in Sodom, as we read in verse 4. The men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, surrounded the house. Young is the Hebrew word, nar, which means a boy from the age of infancy to adolescence. There are many people within the church who are teaching that homosexuality is not a sin, when scripture clearly says it is. This is another sign Jesus gave to look for prior to his second coming, as we read in Matthew 24, 11. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. The source of this splinter dates in a firm form back to 1972. That's when our general conference elected to add some language into our Book of Discipline. This is the document that lays out our theology, our history, our doctrine, our polity, um, a riveting read if there ever was one, but a very important book for our denomination. And in 1972, General Conference added the phrase that 
Homosexuality is incompatible with Christian teaching to this book. Immediately, we started debating about that. Homosexuality is strongly condemned in the Bible. Ezekiel 16, 49 through 50. Look, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughter had pride, fullness of food, and an abundance of idleness. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy, and they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore I took them away as I saw fit. What was this prideful abomination committed before God? The answer is found in the book of Leviticus. Leviticus 18.22 You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Leviticus 20.13 If a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. God gives mankind a dire warning for the acts of homosexuality in 2 Peter 2.6 and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly. God also offers forgiveness to those who are living a life of homosexuality as we read in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Some United Methodists were uncomfortable with that, disagreed with that statement, or disagreed with its inclusion, which isolated a single issue and a single group of persons. Other United Methodists agreed with this statement, but over the years have become increasingly frustrated that some clergy are still marrying same-sex couples, some bishops are still ordaining um, LGBTQ persons who are not celibate. And so as this has escalated and this tension has increased, in recent years, it's hit a point where for some of us, this splintering isn't a total shock. Because this global Methodist church is formed by a group, a group of bishops and clergy who are committed to a traditional stance on human sexuality and the strict enforcement of that for the entire denomination that they've formed. This is why some clergy and some churches are choosing to leave and join this global Methodist church. And this is why I've been asking you to pray for our denomination. I've been here as your pastor for three and a half years. The word of God proclaims, let a woman learn in silence with all submission. And I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. First Timothy 2, 11 and 12. In the church, God assigns different roles to men and women. God through the Apostle Paul, restricts women from serving in roles of teaching or having spiritual authority over men. This precludes women from serving as pastors over men, which definitely includes preaching to them, teaching them, and exercising spiritual authority over them. God has ordained that only men are to serve in positions of spiritual teaching authority in the church. This is not because men are necessarily better teachers or because women are inferior or less intelligent. It is simply the way God designed the church to function. The Bible is clear on the qualifications for being a pastor. He must not be greedy for money and have a good testimony to the unsaved, as we read in 1 Timothy 3, 1-7. This is a faithful saying. If a man desires the position of a bishop, he desires a good work. A bishop that must be blameless. The husband of one wife, temperate, sober-minded, of good behavior, hospitable, able to teach not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not covetous, one who rules his own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence. For if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being puffed up with pride, he fall into the same condemnation as the devil. Moreover, he must have a good testimony among those who are outside, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Notice that the Apostle Paul used the pronouns he and his, and that a bishop or pastor must be the husband of one wife, not the wife of one husband. Scripture clearly teaches 
that women cannot be pastors. I fell in love with you immediately, but it took me a little while to land on language to describe who we are as a church, but I think I'm getting pretty close. Silver First United Methodist Church is a church where scripture comes alive. It's a church that loves to serve Christ through music, through missions and service, through youth ministries, through mentoring and relationships, and this is my favorite part, through fun. This church really likes fun. Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. And for every one of those statements I've just made about the great qualities of these church, there are LGBTQ persons who are a part of that. This is also a church where LGBTQ persons belong. That was true when I arrived here and has been true for a long time. And so that's the reason why, even though we are praying for our denomination, there's not been discussion here of disaffiliating and joining the Global Methodist Church. No one has come to me and asked me to investigate that, not one person. And it's because it's, it's just not who we are. It wouldn't fit who we are. To join the Global Methodist Church would communicate, essentially, that we are all of a traditional mind, and we are not. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus said there would be a falling away from the Christian faith, and false teachers would rise up, as we read in Matthew 24, 10 and 11. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. The Bible tells us these false prophets will twist God's word as we read in 2 Peter 3, 15 and 16. And consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, as written to you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, and which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. The Bible goes on to tell us that these false teachers are Satan's servants, as we read in 2 Corinthians 11, 14, and 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. The last days church will not follow the truth in the Bible. They will find false teachers to tell them their sin is okay. And not just that it is okay, but it is biblical, as we read in 2 Timothy 4, 3, and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure a sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires, and will turn away their ears from the truth, and will turn aside to myths. This is what last day's Christianity looks like. It is a Christianity that says there are many paths to heaven. When the Bible clearly says, Jesus Christ is the only way, it is a Christianity that approves of homosexuality, fornication. If you are having sex, and you are not married, it's not called dating, it's called fornication. And abortion, even though God says these things are sin, it is a Christianity that in its church services look just like the world. Jesus goes on to tell us the last day's church will be such a worldly, Christ-rejecting church that he has been thrown out, as we read in Revelation 3.14-22. through 22. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things, says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold, refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, 
that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him, and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. In these verses of Scripture, Jesus is talking about the last day's lukewarm church, a church that has one foot in the world and one foot in the church. This church is so disgustingly lukewarm that Jesus vomits it out of his mouth. Jesus counsels the last day's church to buy from him gold, which is purity, white garments, which is righteousness, and I salve, which is truth. These three things can only come from the purity, righteousness, and truth that Jesus offers through salvation in him. Jesus is now standing outside the door of the last day's Laodicean church, offering salvation to anyone who will listen. This is the grace and mercy of God. He has been kicked out of his own church, and yet still knocks and offers salvation to anyone who hears his voice and opens the door. I implore you today, if you are not saved, or are a lukewarm Christian, to take up Jesus' offer of salvation that can only be received through him and only him. John 14.6 Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. What does it mean to be a child of God? 1 John 3.10 explains what it means to be a child of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. The life of a child of God will be completely different from the life of the unsaved. A child of God has a desire to live in a way that pleases the Heavenly Father, as we read in 1 Corinthians 10.31. Therefore, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Many people wrongly believe that everyone is a child of God. The Bible teaches us this is not true. We can only become His children when we believe in the name of Jesus Christ, as we read in John 1.12. But as many as received Him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. 2 Corinthians 5.17 describes what happens when we are born again into the family of God through faith in Jesus. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Jesus taught that becoming children of God means we must experience a new birth, as we read in John 3.3. 3. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. A child of God is no longer a child of the devil, and God sets about transforming his children through the power of the Holy Spirit, as we read in Romans 8.13 and 14. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. If we do not begin to look like our Heavenly Father in word, desire, and action, we are most likely not really His, as we read in 1 John 2, 3, and 4. Now by this we know that we know Him, if we keep His commandments. He who says, I know Him, and does not keep His commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in Him. Human beings were created to live as children of God. Sin marred that purpose and broke that bond with him. Christ restores us to that original relationship. For all eternity, the sons and daughters of God will worship him as one united family, as we read in Revelation 7, 9, and 10. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. A child of God lives for him on earth, and eagerly awaits a future with him in heaven, as we read in Philippians 3.20. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear, that any person willing to accept the truth 
can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.